All right, guys, we are in our last topic, chi-square test of independence. In chi, we mean um, the Greek letter chi. Uh, all right, so this is our last topic, and uh, we're in chapter 13, or chapter 11, and we're going to um, stick with hypothesis testing. So if you understand hypothesis testing, this topic should be a breeze for you. So we're going to focus our attention now when we have two categorical variables, and we are looking to see whether there's an association between the two variables. So um, we covered this example earlier in the semester, but let's say we have, we're looking at the Titanic passengers and uh, we recorded whether or not they died after the um, disaster and what class they were from. So there's two categorical variables, live or die and class. And uh, so a two-way table summarizes the, um, the two categorical variables by looking at the counts. And so we could look at the total number of people that lived, that was 711, or died. Or we could break this down by class. So there's 325 first class, 285 second class. Or we could break it down by both variables, so 203 <clears throat> that were from first class that lived. And there was a total of 2,201 passengers that we have information for. So we would want to see whether or not a passenger lived or died, is, is that associated with what class they were from? So were first class passengers more likely to live and third class passengers more likely to die? And so this test, this hypothesis test is called a chi-square test of independence. So the idea is, is um, <clears throat> whether or not you lived dependent on what class you are from, or are they independent? Independent would mean that there's no association between the two variables. Okay, so we're gonna go over the chi-square test of independence. We're gonna rely quite a bit on technology to do this, so we don't have to do a lot of the hard work. Um, but the idea of a chi-square test of independence is the same as for any hypothesis test. So we state the null and alternative, we calculate a test statistic, we have a p-value that we can look up from a table, and then we state a conclusion. So the notation for the test is pretty easy. Um, the letter O represents the observed counts. Those are the numbers that are in this table. You get that straight from the data. The expected values will be represented with the letter E, and those would be what's would be expected if there's no association between the two variables. So mathematically, there's easy to figure out what the expected value is under the null hypothesis, assuming that um, the two variables are not associated in any fashion. And so we compute the test statistic by looking at those differences. So the observed minus expected, well, under the null hypothesis, what are the expected values? If those are close to the observed value, then this test statistic is going to be fairly small, and that would result in a large p-value, so we would not reject the null. And we're not going to do a lot of this, but you can calculate the expected values very easily for each cell. You just take the row total times the column total divided by the grand total. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's fairly simple. There's not a lot of hard calculations for this test. All right, well, degrees of freedom just counts the number of rows and number of columns, and you use that if you were using the table. But um, we're actually going to use technology to look up the p-value, so we don't need to be too concerned about that. All right, so let's uh, walk through an example here. We have the Titanic data, and in the um, the first number is the observed values. So that's the same as the first table. And then the second number is in parentheses are the expected values. And those are going to be what we're comparing, the observed to the expected. So you can see for this cell right here that 203 individuals from first class lived. But under the null hypothesis, we would just expect 105. So more than expected lived from first class. Um, if we go to the crew, we would have expected 286 of them to live. However, only 212 did, so less than expected from the crew survived. So that's how we compare the observed and the expected. 
Um, and we'll just do two calculations. Uh, notice that there's two cells that don't have uh, expected yet. This, whoops, this one right here doesn't have an expected value, and then uh, this one right here doesn't. So we're going to calculate the expected value for those two cells. Okay, I'm just going to abbreviate that by the row and the column. And so this is row two, column one. So I'm just going to say that's the ex expected value for E21. Uh, All right, and then I just want to use this formula here. I take the row total times the column total time divided by the grand total. All right, so here's the uh, row to uh, the row total is 1490. The column total is 325, and the grand total is 2201. Uh, All right, so I take uh, 1490 times 325 divided by 2201. And that is equal to, it is equal to 220. Okay, so I could put that in parentheses up here if I wanted, 220. And then I want to get uh, the other missing one, which is this one right here. And so I would subscript that E1. Uh, for row one and column two. All right, so the row total there is 711. The column total is 285. So I take 711 times 285. And the grand total, of course, is the same. And that gives me 92.1. So that would go here, 92.1. Okay, so that's my uh, observed and expected now for each cell. The null alternative are actually pretty easy for this because we're getting away from the symbols. It's just easier to write this one out as a sentence. And so the null is always just that the two variables are uh, independent. So H naught, uh, we'll say survival and uh, class are independent. What does that mean? That means well, um, whether or not you survived is not related to what class you're um, considered in on the Titanic. All right, and then the alternative is simply that they're dependent. Uh, so we can just write survival and class. You can say not independent or just are dependent. So whether or not you survive depends, at least in some sense, on what class you're from. If you know um, what class you're from, that influences your chance of survival. All right, and so... Um, we're going to rely quite a bit on technology for the chi-square test of independence. And so I'm just going to show, tell you what the p-value is. On the next um, video, you'll actually see how we do this in StatCrunch. But the p-value turned out to be very small. So same thing applies here. It's no different. A small p-value, certainly less than 0 0.05, means that we can reject H0 and uh, <clears throat> conclude that the alternative hypothesis is true. So because our p-value is small, we can reject the null and conclude that a passenger's survival on the Titanic depends on their ticket class. Okay. All right. So that in itself, although important, doesn't really 
give us much information. So we might want to, some more information about well, who was um, who was more uh, likely to survive than expected, or who was less likely to survive than expected. So we did that a little bit already. But one way to examine that question is to compare the observed and the expected. And so we already did that uh, for this right here. We talked about that. But a positive number means that the first number was bigger than the second. So for all of these, uh, these are the observed minus the expected. Oops, let's see. All right. Uh, we're taking for each cell the observed minus the expected. So if the observed is larger than the expected, you're going to get a positive number. So we have a positive number here. That means more people survived than expected, which I explained down there, so I'm not going to write it above. So more people survived than expected from first class. Less people died because there's only two. These, are, um, these here are just going to cancel each other out. So more people survived than expected, then less people died. That's why we have a negative residual. So this is actually where the biggest difference occurred, because our difference between the observed minus the expected is quite large here. And if I go over to the crew, that's where the uh, next largest difference occurred. So for the crew, less people died. Uh, I'm sorry, more people died then more, let's see, all right, let's start over. For the crew members, uh, more people died than expected and less people lived than expected. So this number is negative here for alive. That means the expected was larger than the observed. And down here, this number is positive. That means that the observed was larger than the expected. So more here more died than expected. When we look at the residual, that's just the observed minus uh, the expected for each one of those. And so if we go to the third class, it's the same thing. This is negative. So that means that um, less people lived than expected. And then this is positive, so more people died than expected. All right, and then the next video, which will be our last video of the semester, we'll go over another example.